Terrorists on Sunday night reportedly killed over 28 people in separate attacks in Malagam 1 and Sokon communities of uh, Kagaro, Chiefdom, and Kaura local government area of Kaduna State. The Council Chairman, Honorable Matthew Simon, who confirmed the incident, said he could only confirm seven people gruesomely killed in Sogwon community. The attack is coming barely five days after an attack was launched in Malam Gum, one killing three persons. According to him, all the houses in Sokwon community had raised the, completely raised down the tourist adding that is yet to confirm the killings in Malagam 1. Matthews urged residents in the area to remain calm as uh, security agencies were being deployed to carry out investigation in the area. Well, joining us uh, to discuss uh, on the attacks is uh, Reverend Joseph Hayab, is the chairman, Christian Association of uh, Nigeria. We go on a short break. When we get back, the news continues. Well, we are still on the news and uh, joining us to discuss tonight on the Kaduna State attack is uh, Reverend Joseph Hayab, uh, is uh, the Kaduna State Chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, and uh, Jonathan Ashake he is uh, the Chairman and uh, former President of Southern Kaduna People's Union. It's so good to have you join us tonight. Thank you, Thank you. for having me. All right, I'm going to start with you, uh, Jonathan. What's the atmosphere like in Kaduna after the unfortunate incident? Well, it's, uh, it's very tense. Uh, following the attacks that took place last week, precisely on Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, and the one that took place early morning hours of today, Okay. The attackers are still looking around the hills and they are, they are threatened to come back and uh, the villagers have uh, been, I, I, I just came from there this evening, the villagers have been packing their things and relocating to neighboring villages and so the atmosphere is still very tense. Uh, so back to you, uh, Reverend uh, Hayab. Uh, don't you think it's about uh, time we enforce uh, community policing in the country where people take charge of their security themselves? We've had the government trying to come out to condemn these attacks, of course, and uh, we still have a repeat of this situation. Don't you think it's about time for people to take uh, control of their own security, especially the northern part of the country? Unfortunately, the leaders or the political leaders or those in power have actually been paying leave service to issue of people protecting themselves. Especially in Southern Kaduna, we know very well that uh, sometimes when they come, they just go to villages, ransack houses, pick even then guns, uh, daggers, and few things that people are keeping to chase away enemies like these criminals. And then they will now parade them out there and say they have gotten gun runners. And so how can people protect themselves if government is playing lip service to sincerity about securing them? These people have everything or have, are willing to protect themselves, have done a, a lot to protect themselves. But many of them end up landing in jail, in police cell for months and sometimes for almost a year, being accused for a crime they never commit. Just their crime is that they want to protect themselves. They want to defend their territory. They want to ensure that they protect their land. They want to ensure that nothing bad happens to them. So I'm really sad. I'm disappointed. I was in Southern Carolina this morning. I felt really bad because why on earth can we continue like this? And we have a government put in place. We have security agencies. But actually, when you drive around the roads, you see many of them. And you ask yourself, is this just to patrol and collect offering? Not really about protecting and securing the people. What kind of a government do we have? What kind of leaders do we have? So it is time for people to protect themselves. People have always been willing to protect themselves. But will government really allow them to protect themselves? When they come out, they will just come with some kind of funny charges on them, lock them up. That year, if you are young, the only son of your father, you will not farm on the year, and you will be in jail because probably they caught you with daggers. I, have, I know cases of young men who came out and pursued killers like this, only to be coming back and find security men have arrived, and they arrest them to be the killers. Well, the killers have gone and hidden. So what do you expect the people to do? 
All right, so back to you, uh, Mr. Jonathan. Do you think uh, this is uh, a kind of, uh, a form of strategy to, to scare the people from exercising their rights uh, ahead of the 2023 elections? Yeah, I've, I've, I've said so already. Okay. Uh, if you look at what is, uh, if, if watch what is happening carefully, you will see that the, in the southern part of Kaduna State, uh, during the Christmas season and the New Year, that is the time that everybody goes home, uh, families go home from the cities and they, 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 they converge to celebrate the Christmas and the New Year. And that's when they celebrate cultural festivals. And so uh, it, it is very timely. And then we, we, are, we, are, we are moving towards the general elections that comes up on, in February. And so we have had this experience where we are beginning to think that the elections in Kaduna State may be isolated. I mean, area, areas that, you know, uh, uh, that are for uh, uh, where elections may not be won by a particular political party. Uh, it's likely that the elections will be lifted and, or, or, and, and isolated and conducted in another, another time. So local governments that are not favorable to a particular political party may be isolated. That is what we're suspecting. Uh, back to you, Reverend Ayab. Uh, what do you think is taking the government really this long to put an end to this situation, especially in uh, the northern parts of uh, the country? What do you think is taking them long? And uh, even previous acts have actually been swept under the carpet. Uh, the governor has actually come out to give out relief materials to uh, the victims. But is this the end to the situation? I'm not sure that is what the people want. The people want security. The people want protection. The people want to feel the impact of government. And the best the government can give them is just to secure them. If the government secure them, they will go to their family. If the government secure them, they will do their legitimate business, earn a living, and send their children to school. Unfortunately, government have not been able to do that because in the beginning, government came with pretext. The fact of all is that government in Kaduna State took a very dangerous step by beginning to even aid and shield those who were killing our citizens mm -hmm. by actually coming out to speak in favor of those who were killing and destroying our citizens. Mm -hmm. The government of business they were not honest was or was not honest to the citizens in speaking and condemning the attack in even coming out to go after the criminals. The fact that was criminals in Kaduna State seem to have had a field day, they were having a field day and the government now turned and was attacking uh, stakeholders who were calling for security, who who were calling for protection, who were calling to the end of this evil and barbaric act that was going on. Government was taking all her energy and resources, attacking them, calling them names instead of going after criminals. Criminals that are supposed to be on the run were actually just watching how government is even fighting for them. Government was say that we weren't fighting for them, but for the mere fact that government made the mistake of turning against our citizens, accusing people who just cry out because of what they are seeing, who just cry out because of the pains that is going on in their community. So the criminals fell oh, this government will be siding us and continue to advance, 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 and they have advanced and gathered strength. They have completely taken over so many places, and now it's even difficult for the government to come. So if the government comes out now and even condemn them, they will just laugh at government because the time government is supposed to go after them, government will not go after them and allow them to grow wings and become very strong. Government was dealing with them with some kind of uh, kid gloves or rhetoric that could not even kill a fly. Now they have become strong. Now they have mastered the, 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 the terrain and they are causing more harm. So if you even speak against them, you get the lot of government instead of government going after them. I felt government didn't do it. That too. Another thing government didn't do right is because she never engaged stakeholders in finding solutions. She came with, I know everything. I can do everything. Unfortunately, security is not about you know everything. Security is everybody's business. Security is all inclusive. You don't fight security by just talking on the, on, on, on the media, by shouting on people. You fight security by what? Addressing what are the issues, reaching out and let people visibly experience the presence of government in their midst. But that is not what is happening in South Africa. So the people of South Africa are really sad because the way and manner government is treating us do not show that we belong and it is 
also not in South Africa alone, but going to many other parts of northern Nigeria. When Boko Haram started, many northern elders came out, were even attacking the then leadership of Nigeria as if it were the leadership versus them, not knowing that these people were terribly criminals that would cause pains to everybody. Boko Haram grew wing and continued to attack every part until they moved and started attacking Abuja. Now it becomes an, it became an everybody's problem. That is the kind of situation, and that's the way our government have always treated insecurity. Instead of going after criminals and showing them that we have a government that has taken oath that she would defend and protect citizens, mm -hmm. government seems to be playing game with the matter until it is out of hand. Uh, well, finally, before I let you both go, I need to ask, uh, what advice do you have for people living in these communities on uh, self-protection? Really, I will not have to wait until I'm being attacked in my home. I will also ask uh, the same question to Mr. Jonathan. But Reverend Ayab, let's see what, he, uh, yeah, what yeah, you have to say. Can I always tell the people not to run, not to give in, and stand up and defend their territory. Whatever may be the reason that these criminals, these terrorists are terrorizing the people, they should know that there are people in that community. Mm -hmm. But having said that, there's a caveat. When you know the kind of sophisticated weapon that these people come with, whatever form of courage you have, when they open fire and you begin to hear the sound, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, you may not be able to stand them. And that's where government will still come back to government and, and say, where is our government? All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Joseph Ayab is uh, the chairman, Christian Association of uh, Nigeria. And uh, fortunately, we lost uh, uh, the former president, Southern Kaduna People's uh, Union, Jonathan Ashake. It's so good to have you uh, tonight. Thank you so much for joining us on the news. Thank you, too, for having me. I All appreciate right. it. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.